Hi everyone, welcome again. In this video, we will be exploring different frameworks and APIs that you can use to connect your applications to a database. So, if you are confused about terms like ORM, JPA, Spring JDBC, or Spring Data JPA, then this video is for you because we will be covering all these terms. So, let's get started. Let's start with ORM. What is ORM? Object Relational Mapping. So, ORM is nothing but a technique. It's an exercise to create a mapping between objects and databases. And most of the time, these databases are relational databases like MySQL, Postgres. And when we talk about the objects, it is about object oriented programming. So, for example, Java. If we talk about Hibernate, then Hibernate is an ORM framework. It is a framework that provides a way to map Java objects to database tables. Now, Hibernate is widely used. It's a mature and stable framework. And most of the time, it is the first choice for managing the persistence layer of the application. In Hibernate, we can define mappings between the Java classes and database tables using annotations or XML configurations. And apart from this, it offers many features uh, like caching, lazy loading, uh, persistence API, projections, searching, and all that. So all in all, Hibernate is an ORM framework. In an application, if we are using just the Hibernate, then we say that we are using native Hibernate because there is no other thing and we are utilizing all the features of the Hibernate in that application. Hibernate is not the only ORM framework. Other frameworks are Toppling by Oracle, Eclipse Link, and Zango, for example, for Python. So ORM is a technique and Hibernate is an ORM framework. Now let's move on. Now let's talk about JPA. The last slide we talked about Hibernate and we briefly covered a different ORM frameworks like Toplink by Oracle and Eclipse Link. Now each vendor has its own way to implement the ORM features. So there are differences between different vendors. How Hibernate does something will be different from Toplink. And to overcome these differences, and make the ORM features consistent, the community came up with JPA. JPA was known as Java Persistence API, but it has been renamed to Jakarta Persistence API. JPA is a standard which specifies what an ORM framework should do and how should it work. It's about some guarantees, uh, it's about correctness of a program, but vendors are free to use their implementations so if JPA defines something, Hibernate can choose to provide its own implementation and Toplink uh, may do it differently. But they still need to implement that feature or uh, that they still need to provide that guarantee in their implementation. So, so JPA is nothing but a standard. Here we see the different implementations of JPA. So Hibernate is one implementation of JPA. Eclipse Link also implements the JPA. In an application, instead of using native Hibernate, which means uh, instead of using Hibernate specific annotations, implementations and classes, we can use JPA, but with Hibernate as its implementation. So when we use JPA with Hibernate, it combines the benefits of the JPA, which is the specification and the implementation, which is given in the Hibernate. And when we use JPA with Hibernate, we write code that follows the JPA specification and it makes an application more portable which allows us to switch between different JPA providers if needed. So for example, if I'm using JPA with Hibernate and in future if I need to migrate to let's say Eclipse link, then I can easily do that because overall I am following the JPA specification. Now JPA provides a set of annotations and APIs classes that allow us to define and manage the entity classes, their relationships and queries in a standard way. And Hibernate as the underlying implementation takes care of translating these things into appropriate SQL statements. So that's what we mean when we say JPA with Hibernate. It means we are following the JPA specification. We are using JPA specific annotations, but we are still using Hibernate as its implementation. Let's move on. Let's talk about Spring JDBC. So Spring JDBC is part of Spring Data family and it provides enhanced support for JDBC based data access. So it's a simple and lightweight abstraction layer 
built around JDBC, which is the Java database connectivity. Now we know that JDBC is a standard API for connecting and interacting with databases in Java. What Spring JDBC does, it simplifies the database access process by providing an API and handling many of the common things that we as developers generally do with JDBC. So for example, with Spring JDBC, we can still execute SQL queries. We can handle the transactions. We can retrieve the results from the database. Spring JDBC is flexible. It gives us the full control over the SQL statements. We can write complex queries if and when required. How do we use Spring JDBC? In a project, we need to add Spring dependencies. Then we need to have the database. Then we define the data source. And then we configure JDBC template or named parameter JDBC template beans. And we use these beans to fire or to trigger DB queries. Spring JDBC is a good choice if we require direct control over the SQL statements and when the project doesn't need sophisticated ORM mapping or object relational mapping features which we talked about. Moving on. Let's not talk about Spring Data JPA. Spring Data JPA is also the part of overall Spring Data family and it provides enhanced support for JPA based data access. When we work with Spring Data JPA, we get the power of JPA with the overall capabilities of the Spring Framework. Spring Data JPA is again a higher level abstraction that simplifies the common database operations. Spring Data JPA reduces the amount of boilerplate code by providing default implementations for these operations based on the conventions and naming standards. So depending on what we are writing, what we are configuring, Spring Data JPA makes an assumption and chooses the default implementations for operations so that we don't have to write things explicitly in most of the cases, of course. Spring Data GPA also offers query creation mechanisms, which allows us to define queries using method names. When we are using, let's say, CRUD repository or JPA repository, we can use custom query annotations. Now, the important thing is that under the hood, Spring Data JPA uses Hibernate as the implementation. So even though we are using Spring capabilities, we still benefit from the Hibernate features and optimizations. Now, Spring Data JPA is a great choice if we are building a Spring based application and we still want to leverage the power of JPA in that application. Let's move on. Now that we have talked about different terms like ORM, native Hibernate, JPA, JPA with Hibernate, Spring Data JDBC and uh, Spring Data JPA. Let's talk about possible implementations. We can use plain JDBC API, which is always the choice. Or we can simplify JDBC with Spring Data JDBC. And it's a great option if we are already using Spring Framework. The third option would be to use Hibernate on its own, which is also known as native Hibernate which means in the application we are using ORM features and we are using Hibernate to do that. And on top of that, we are using Hibernate specific annotations, classes, interfaces and everything. So this is all Hibernate. The next thing would be to use JPA with Hibernate as its implementation, which means that instead of using Hibernate specific classes, interfaces and annotations, we use JPA specific annotations and interfaces and classes. And the implementation of those things will be provided by Hibernate. So for that, we'll add uh, corresponding dependencies in the project. But the important thing is we are using JPA with Hibernate. We are still using Hibernate, but the overall annotations or the abstractions, they belong to the JPA. The last option is Spring Data JPA, but with Hibernate as its implementation. So these are the possible approaches that we can follow in an application. Now this table will help us to quickly compare the different options. If we talk about the native Hibernate, then we see that we have the fine grained control over database operations. And because we are using Hibernate, it's a mature and stable ORM framework. But the downside is it adds additional complexity to your application and it requires steeper learning curve. If we are using JPA with Hibernate, then yes, uh, it makes the application portable. That means we can switch between different JPA implementations. 
like hibernate or eclipse link but because we are using hibernate as its implementation then we benefit from hibernate's robustness and features the minor downside with jpa is the limitations because it does not support all the features uh, because it's a standard if we compare it with let's say hibernate then hibernate has many more features and to use those features we'll have to use hibernate specific classes and annotations in that in that project but we can still use hibernate with jpa if we talk about the spring jdbc then we have the direct control over sql statements it's simple to use uh, it's it's a lightweight abstraction around jdbc what about the downsides if we are using spring jdbc then it means the application doesn't have the proper object relational mapping and even if we try to implement that it requires the manual efforts to do that to convert database table results to pojos and from pojos to queries and the last option is spring data jpa in which the application is integrated with the spring ecosystem and it reduces the boilerplate code for common CRUD operations and for common ORM operations what about the downside spring data jpa is not suitable for complex domain models and relationships for that we'll have to use the hibernate so with this comparison table we can better understand the features strengths and considerations of each approach but ultimately the choice of approach depends on the project and the requirement expertise and complexity of your domain model so I hope this analysis has given you a better understanding of different terms, frameworks and different database connectivity options. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.